So hello everyone, I am Hassan, I am from the University of Michigan. And today I'm going to present our work on Hydra. This is a system for resilient and highly available remote memory. This work is done in collaboration with Symbiotic Lab at University of Michigan, Hanyang University, and Columbia University. So before I start, let's first discuss what is remote memory and why do we care about its resiliency. Remote memory allows an application to go beyond one machine's physical memory boundary by exposing a cluster-wide global memory pool. In this setup, when a machine is under severe memory pressure, it can use the free memory available in other machine and therefore it can run more tasks. However, as there are multiple machines uh, involved in, in this setup, remote memory systems are vulnerable to a wide variety of failure domains. For example, remote memory can become un unavailable when some of the machines get crashed or some of the data chunks in remote machines get evicted or even when the network get partitioned. Moreover, when there are uh, background, uh, background traffic in the network, it, the network can get congested and at that point the tail latency can be very high. Not only that, uh, memory in remote servers can get corrupted and results in erroneous uh, memory. All of these problems lead to a catastrophic application crash, high tail latency, and very unpredictable performance, application level performance. Recent study shows that to maintain a seamless performance in remote memory systems, the end-to-end -end end -end memory access latency should not go beyond three to five microseconds. However, as there are network involved, the performance loss is inevitable, and this performance loss becomes much worse when there are any failure or uncertainty in the systems. To understand the impact of failure in remote memory systems, we run TPC workload on an in-memory database systems, VolDB, over uh, InfiniSwap, which is a state-of-the-art remote memory framework. And we measure the performance of VolDB in terms of throughput per second. Here, the higher throughput means the better performance. So when we run VolDB on 50% configuration, that means half of its memory is in local machine, and the rest of the half in remote, me uh, remote machines, we can uh, see the performance drop is not that much. Only 13% of the performance um, goes away, even though like, uh, the memory is almost the half in the local machine. However, in the presence of remote failure, VolDB needs to access the backup memory, and at that point, its performance almost goes away, almost 90% of the throughput uh, diminishes. Same goes for when there are background network load or there are any kind of corruptions. In all of these events, 50 to 90% of the throughput goes away from VolDB. So during this performance drop, how much loss we are going to expect? That depends on how we are going to maintain the backup. Existing remote memory frameworks uses three approaches for providing resiliency under failure. The first one is local disk backup. This is very popular because in, at that, uh, for that, re for that uh, approach, you don't need any extra memory overhead, but here the memory access latency is much, much higher. So when you want to access the disk, the latency can go up to hundreds of microseconds to even few milliseconds. Another popular approach is like these in-memory replications. This is much faster than disk, but here your memory overhead is almost two to three times high. In-memory erasure coding can be a good trade-off point because here the memory overhead is only 1.25x, and the latency is in the range of 20 microseconds at the average, and in the tail it's like 40 to 50 microseconds. This is much better than the disk-based approaches, but yet we are way beyond the latency requirement of remote memory of three to five microseconds. So that motivates us to build a very fast ESR coded memory for remote memory systems. Microsecond scale ERASR coded remote memory system is challenging for two prime reasons. The first one is like high coding latency. Here, um, usually ERASR coded is done on a large memory chunk, mostly uh, larger than one megabytes of memory. But for remote memory systems, if you want to do that, we have to wait for a certain numbers of pages to available. And this makes the encoding process uh, wait. 
And this wait time can be insignificant comparing to disk access or TCP network access, but for very ultra fast microsecond scale uh, network, this is, uh, is, this is not in, uh, negligible. At the same time, when there are straggler or errors in the network, the decoding process also need to wait, and that can also add up to the tail latency. Not only that, when the coding thread and the network IO thread needs to context switch, it can also add more latency. Sometimes it can take few microseconds to tens of microseconds for there. Even any smaller data movement due to the copy can add up and limit the latency requirement needed for remote memory systems. The second challenge is availability under simultaneous failure. So existing systems uses random data placement mostly or part of two choices for data uh, spread during erasure coding, and that makes them vulnerable to uh, data loss when multiple machine goes down together. For example, in one of our experiment with 100 uh, cluster node, we find that if only 1% of the machine goes there simultaneously, the chance of data loss is above 13%. So considering all of these challenges, we come up with Hydra, which is a low latency and highly available remote memory that can provide online erasure coded memory in single digit microsecond latency at the tail. We employ a novel data placement policy, we name it coding set. It uh, guarantees high data availability while maintaining a better load balancing. And all of these features of Hydra can be easily pluggable to existing remote memory frameworks without modifying the applications or needing any special hardware. Now I will talk about Hydra's design principle and its architecture. In Hydra, we have two main components. The first one is Resilience Manager, uh, which is responsible for e-shared coded remote read or write. And the second one is Resource Monitor, which uh, manages the memory in remote machines. Both of them can run together on a single machine and work without any kind of central coordinations. In Hydra, all the remote I.O. happens in four kilobyte page granular. So when an unmodified application wants to write something to remote machine, it contacts to the designated memory designation framework, and from that point, Hydra's resilience manager captured the four kilobyte write request. It therefore split it to K data splits, and encodes it, generate RP IT splits, and eventually spread them across the remote machines. Similarly, during read, Hydra's resilience manager contacts the appropriate resource monitor, collect the necessary uh, numbers of data and parity splits, decode the page, and eventually update the page table. Hydra's design principle can be divided into two broader domains, the data plane and the control plane. So data plane is responsible for providing ultra-fast remote memory interface, and for this reason, we employ multiple um, optimization techniques like asynchronous encoded write, late binding resilient read, run to completion for avoiding any kind of context switching, and zero copy coding. For the sake of time, in this presentation, I am going to like focus on the first two feature of Hydra so data plane. So during a remote write, instead of a large chunk of data, Hydra uh, encodes a four kilobyte page. So whenever a four kilobyte page is ready to go remote machine, Hydra immediately split it to K data part and start the writing immediately. In the, at the same time, in parallel, it initiates the encoding process and generate R parity splits. And after whenever these parity splits are ready, it write them to remote machines. This asynchronous write and encoding makes Hydra to avoid or at least hide the coding overhead. So now a write can be ended as soon as any case splits is written to remote machine, but that does not give us a resiliency guarantee. To have the resiliency guarantee when our machines are failed, we need to wait until K plus R data and parity splits are written to remote machines. Similarly, during read, any case splits is enough to decode a page. However, some machine can take times to response, or there can be some errors in the network, so for that reason, instead of just initiating K splits, we start with K plus R data splits, and we can, we can initiate the decoding process just whenever any K splits are available there. 
So in the terms of, in the presence of straggler, when the straggler split comes later, we just discard it and don't like consider it for the dis, uh, deco decoding process. This gives Hydra uh, to lose the tail latency during read by 61% at the cost of slightly higher network bandwidth. Hydra's control plane is responsible for providing availability and better load balancing. We introduced coding set, uh, which is a novel data placement for erasure coding. It also performs adaptive allocation, deallocation, and regeneration of evicted, um, unavailable remote memory data. For brevity, I am going to talk about Hydra's coding set here only. So whenever the data and patty splits are available for erase, uh, after the erasure coding, coding set selects a set of machine and spread them across the cluster. Here the idea is like uh, we spread them in such a way uh, so that if a group of machines fails together, not all the splits get affected by that. For this reason, instead of randomly selecting the machines, we divide the whole cluster into a set of failure domains here, a failure domain is a set of machines where each set is disjoint from each one to another. And from, from a particular failure domain, we always pick K plus R machines with the lo least, loaded, uh, least loaded one. And this helps Hydra to like um, reduce the probability of data loss under simultaneous failure and also help to like improve the balancing, load balancing across the cluster. We integrate Hydra to three state-of-the-art remote memory systems like uh, InfiniSwap, Leap, remote regions, and we evaluate it on a 50, uh, 50 machine cluster, each connected with like 56 gig of, uh, GBPS InfiniBand uh, network. We evaluate Hydra with both micro benchmark and for memory intensive real life workload and application combinations. So because of Hydra's very ultra-fast data path and uh, very better data placement policy, Hydra can sustain any kind of remote failure and it gives the same performance as of there is no uncertainty in the network. So for example, we run the TPCC workload with VolDB at 50% remote memory configuration and we can find Hydra, in, with Hydra, the performance loss is only 10%, wherever without the Hydra, the performance loss was 90%. And same holds for network load, background network load, and memory corruptions. In terms of comparison with the replication, Hydra also provides the same performance, but at a very much lower memory overhead. Like for TPCC use case, Hydra's performance loss is only within 5%. And same holds for the other applications like memcached, PowerGraph, and the Spark. The performance loss is within three to ten percent, uh, three to five percent in most of the cases. And as coding set spreads the data across diverse failure domain with Hydra, the chance of data loss is much lower. And we can see that uh, in a thousand machine cluster simulation at varied failure rate. Hydra can provide almost 10, parts, uh, 10 times better availability uh, comparing to its counterparts. Same goes for load balancing. It can give almost 1.5 times better load balancing, uh, even with uh, 100 millions of nodes of clusters. So in terms of performance versus uh, memory trade-off case, Hydra is the best of the both world. We can have uh, seven microsecond latency in the average and in the tail, the latency is around less than 10, uh, 10 microseconds. And here we have the memory overhead is only 1.25x. So in summary, Hydra is a low overhead and highly available resilient remote memory, which has very optimized data path uh, to provide less than uh, 10 microsecond um, remote memory data path at the tail. And it is very highly available. And the source code is available in this link. So that's all from me. I'm happy to have any questions from you.